Hey guys, welcome back to another episode with Utabisile Songbird. And today I just want us to talk mainly about grief, dealing with grief and being intentional about healing and coming out of grief, you know. Um, just to put it out there, I'm not a psychologist or anything. I'm just mainly going to use my experience as a person who has experienced grief. And I still believe I do. I still have moments of it. Um, but um, obviously, I'll just share a bit of my experience and what I feel has helped me. Um, yeah, after I lost my dad and the entire thing, you know. I mean, obviously, with grief, we know that there's... There's like a lot of stages to it, you know, you get a stage where you're angry and where you're confused, where you're depressed and then you eventually get to that stage where you, you accept, you know, you accept the entire, the entire loss of that person or another dog or whatever because, yeah, we, we, we form relationships with a whole lot of living things, not just human beings. But um, for me, I think, you know, if... If you aren't really careful with grief, you can you can be in that in that mental space of darkness because you get to a point where that you get to a point there's a point of grief that is a really really dark space. Like it takes so much for you to come out of there, and it takes so much of your emotional strength for you to 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 come out of that place, you know and. The one thing that I have realized about grief is that when you aren't careful about it, you can literally stay in that in that hole forever when you aren't being intentional about your healing, you know. Um, and the, the only way I think I can describe that place just after losing somebody dear is like literally when you lose your sense of, of, of walking and you become paralyzed. You, you become paralyzed and you become paralyzed to literally everything you know you lose interest in the things that made you happy you lose interest in the things the people that made you happy you know it would take somebody who really really loves you who, who can actually understand those dimensions and those dynamics of a grief to actually stick with you because you really become a moody person you lose this interest in a lot of things and how i think i've it has helped me throughout the, what, the three years, four years that I've lost my dad is that you need to be intentional with with coming out of that space. At some point, you just need to be like, Ugh, fuck this thing. I just, I, I, I need to like, yeah. I mean, if you really have a sense of, of, a sense of being purposeful and getting your life, you need to be like, fuck the shit up and just push it aside obviously me saying that this is not me saying that you must not deal with it and avoid it because that's entirely also another problem but it's like you deal with the wound because a grief it's, it's a wound i believe that takes years and probably may never even heal you know because sometimes i mean i had a 20 something years relationship with my dad i can't really expect me to be okay just after four years when i've known this person for 20 years and i think we turn to to rush these things you know at some point that yeah it's been four years I, I need to get over it by now you know and it's not like that it it really takes time it really takes time and i think when you have found yourself now when you are in that space of grief i think the first things that you need to do is being intentional you know um, being intentional with the things that made you happy before. I mean, what did you do before you lost that, that, that person? You know, did you like going out? Did you like being outdoors? You know, um, I think the best illustration for me that really describes, you know, when you've just lost your sense of walking, like I mentioned, and you're trying to regain walking and everything, you literally have to take it step by step every day. Um, you do your, I forgot what it's called. Um, yeah, but I'll, I'll put it down on the video. You, you constantly have to now be intentional. When you've lost your sense of walking every day, you need to wake up and try to walk. Because, like, I'll, you, you remind yourself because your, your, your senses and your, your emotions have forgotten how to walk again. And that's what grief does. You know, you lose your sense of, of interest in things that made you happy. You no longer find interest in them. And... So now you have to be intentional 
by doing them. If you, you are feeling a sense of grief, you need to be intentional about deciding if you love going out for coffee, like I do, have your solo dates, do it. And doing it means you're not going to feel like doing it, but that's what happens when you are trying to be intentional about certain things. You do them even when you don't feel like it, you know? And so I think the biggest thing for me is that be intentional, you know, be intentional about reminding yourself of, of who you were before you lost that person. And there's a deep sense of, of comfort also that comes with that because you know that the person that you're grieving or mourning would never want you to be in a space where you are constantly crying, where you are just lifeless, you know? And yeah, I'm gonna share a, a, other points this as well, probably in another video, but I think the biggest one about it, if you've, you've gone through loss now, is just that be intentional and every feeling that you feel, the anger, the bitterness, the confusion, the depression, is all valid. You are valid for being angry at God. <laughs> you know, sometimes I think we take our relationship with God as a God who is not understanding and who only wants us to be in a in a happy space. But being angry and being bitter is just as important as being happy. You know, for you to get to that point of acceptance, accepting um, grief and the death of a lost one, you have to go through these other emotions. And what we tend to do normally with people is that after we give people the time frame that after this certain period, they are supposed to be okay. Because what, it's been five years and you're still not okay about losing your mother, your child, your father, you know, and it, it, it's, it, you, you can't really put a time frame to it. You can't put a time frame to it. Um, the hands I said that if you aren't careful, you can be with, with, within a dark hole of grief for the rest of your life, you know. And so, yeah, I think for me, I'm still, I still, I'm still not over the fact of losing my dad. But I know I've, I've learned how to walk again. Um, I've learned how to walk again in terms of running. I'm not so certain. But so, but yeah, this is like I said, I'm not a psychologist. I'm just trying to share certain views. Maybe also you guys, you can share what really has helped you to deal with grief and how are you maintaining that, that, that being in a, in a space where you are, you remain positive and yeah. And I think another thing that I would say is that dealing with the feeling when you're feeling it there's nothing wrong with having that one bad day where you just cry it out that's just the one thing about me even with breaks breakups or anything like that i will deal with it i'm not gonna be out here for a week you know crying for a nigga or crying for a lost relationship or whatever i will moan that shit for a day i have a day particularly i will cry about it i will eat if I have to and do everything but after that you know it's just that when you've lost somebody who's so dear like my dad I, 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 I just couldn't just like you cry it out and today you realize flip I'm still feeling like this it's been a month it's been three months it's been an entire year and I'm still feeling like this you know so but yeah just another form I think you just deal with it cry when you're feeling it cry don't avoid it you know